Hi there. My name is Gary and I'm going to be giving a lecture today on uh, the topic of uh, how to write a formal letter. So this is a type of what we call directed writing. And uh, let's take a look at that. So I'm going to minimize myself down to the corner here so we can take a look at the slides. So the first thing we want to talk about a little bit is what is directed writing. So it's when you're given a set of instructions or uh, you're told specifically what to write about. So for example in the slide it says students are given a question with directions on what to write about and the question inside the question that you're asked it will tell you who the the, the uh, what the content is. So what is the subject matter? What are you writing about? What, who the audience is? So who are you writing to? The format. Um, so what form of directed writing to use? So it could be a formal letter, an informal letter, um, a report. Uh, there's a few other ones that we're going to talk about in a few minutes. And then the point of view of your letter. And that's Basically, uh, from what point of view are you writing? Was there something that happened and you're responding to it? Or are you complaining about something that happened and writing a letter of complaint? So, here are the different types of directed writing in this slide. So, the one we're talking about today in more detail is formal letter. So, that's could also be called a business letter, but it's, it's very formal, it uses um, proper grammar, punctuation, and doesn't use any slang words, uses proper English. Uh, an informal letter, you have a lot more freedom with that one. There's not quite as many rules. Uh, a report, you could be writing a report about something. As a student, you probably know what a report is already. Um, an account, maybe something that happened. Um, you could be writing an article, for example, an article for a web page or a newspaper or a magazine. And also you could be writing a speech for someone. Some, you could be preparing a speech for somebody that has to give a speech. Okay, so those are some of the forms or actually all of the forms of directed writing. And now we're going to get into formal letters and what is a formal letter. So formal letter, as I said before, it's also sometimes called a business letter. It uses proper English, no slang words. It's important to be respectful and uh, to be polite when you're writing a formal letter. And grammar and spelling are important. Now, there's a few different purposes or reasons why you might be writing a formal letter. And the reason is important because you, that's going to be the first paragraph. It's going to be in the first paragraph of the letter that you, that you write it. So just briefly, one reason would be to give somebody some information about something. So giving information, something that we do every day, we're passing on information to other people. Uh, or the second point here is to complain. So maybe you weren't happy with something at the store or a restaurant or some other uh, issue or problem you could be complaining about. Uh, number three here is to confirm details. And um, once again, uh, I've got complaint here. I've got that twice. Uh, an inquiry is when you're asking about something. You have some questions, so you write a letter and you're asking questions about it. Uh, another reason why you might write a formal letter is a suggestion. So you're trying to help somebody improve something or make it better, so you make a suggestion. Then uh, there's a letter of appreciation. Um, so for example, if you have a business and you have an employee that's been there for a very long time, you may... Uh, have a party for them and write them a letter of appreciation to say how much they mean to you. Uh, you could do the same with a teacher. If you've had a teacher that uh, has been teaching you for a long time, then you might write a letter of appreciation to them. And 
last but certainly not least on this list is a job application. So when you're uh, older and you are um, working on resumes and applying for jobs, usually you include what's called a cover letter. And the cover letter is a f type of formal letter um, that basically introduces you and says why you might be good for that job. So that's another reason why you would write a formal letter. So next we're going to take a look at the different parts of a formal letter. And this is basically a formula that you can follow. And if you follow this formula, you'll get it right every time. So first we've got the address. That's the first thing you write, like, dear sir. Then the subject, what is subject and introduction often go together in the same paragraph. Uh, what are you writing about? And the introduction introduces the problem or the issue that you're writing about. Then body paragraphs, we'll talk more about that, but usually there's three uh, short paragraphs. There's a conclusion, that's your final paragraph. And then your closing, which would be one of these four is probably the best choice. So yours sincerely, yours faithfully, yours truly, uh, best regards are good choices. After that, you've got your signature, uh, where you just sign your name in pen, and then uh, your name typed. So if you're asked to write a formal letter on a test or exam, just read the question very carefully, because basically they will give you the answer inside of the question. They'll tell you everything that you need to do. You just have to try to remember the format. And we're, go we're going over that in more detail now. So the first thing we talked about was the address. And dear sir, if it's a male, female would be dear madame, uh, dear principal, if you're writing to the principal of a school, or dear officer, if you're writing to some officer in the military or police. Um, so those are different ways you could open up the letter with the address. Um, the next thing is the subject. It's a short sentence that explains what your letter is about. So you can ask yourself, why am I writing this? So what's the main point or the main idea that I want to get across with uh, this letter? And a few examples of subject here are letter to the editor about mistakes in the magazine, letter to the transport supervisor complaining about the bus conductor. So those are a few different subject letters. Um, next is the introduction. So the subject and introduction are combined together, usually in the first paragraph. And uh, you give the reason and the purpose of the letter, and you might also include some background information about yourself. So who are you? Um, you can say the the reason why you're writing the letter in um, in the subject, but then in the introduction you you can introduce uh, more details about the problem and about yourself. Then the body paragraphs on a test or exam they'll often give you three main content points to write about. So you create one short paragraph for each content point. So that means three paragraphs. So, so far, we've got the address, dear sir. We've got the subject and introduction is the first paragraph. And now we've got three paragraphs. But in the question, in the test or exam question, they will tell you exactly what you're going to be writing about. So you just have to write one for each of the three points that you're given. One paragraph for each of the three points. Remember, uh, it should be informative, but not too long because you're not writing an essay or a report style. Um, you're just writing a letter. And most of the time, we want our letters to be able to fit on a single page of paper, single piece of paper. Okay, so moving on. Uh, the conclusion is the final paragraph. So that's when you're wrapping it up. You, you might briefly restate some of your main points in the conclusion. You summarize everything. And once again, this doesn't have to be a long paragraph, but it, it should explain uh, or it should conclude 
should bring a definite ending to the letter. Now, you've got the last three parts are quite easy to remember. The closing, which is yours sincerely, yours faithfully, yours truly, or best regards. And I suggest using one of those four. They're probably the most formal and best ones you can use. And then after that, signature, just sign your name. And then your name typed. So that's, uh, that's how you're going to be uh, ending the letter. So kind of going back and taking a look at that again. In these points, we've got the address, the subject, and introduction, which are usually combined in, in a single paragraph. Your body paragraphs, there'll be three of those. Your conclusion is your final paragraph, then your closing, and your signature and your name. So it, it really is just a formula that you can follow um, to successfully write a formal letter. Now, if you follow this formula, you will pretty much be successful each time, every, every time. You just have to remember to, you know, just uh, try to watch your spelling and grammar and um, try to put as much information as you can into it. But read the, read the exam or test question very carefully and make sure you know what they're asking you to write about. And that's very important. Uh, sometimes uh, students do not take the time to read the question carefully, and they might give part of the wrong answer, so you could lose points on something like that. So um, we do have an example here that we can take a look at. Um, I'm just going to close that down. And this is an example question that you might be asked on a test or exam. So the task here, or the question is, you return to your house one day to find it has been broken into and many of your possessions have been stolen. You decide to write a letter to the police to report the robbery. So you write the letter, you must include the following. And these are the three content points. So you've already, you, you've got your subject introduction, then these three points that you have to include so at what time and for how long were you away from the house when the robbery took place? That's one paragraph. Then next content is detailed information about the most valuable items taken. And then the third paragraph will be any clues you have noticed and how you think the police might be able to catch the thieves. So cover all three points in detail. Make sure your letter is informative and helpful for the police. Start your letter with Dear Sirs, so they're telling you exactly how to start your letter in the, the question here. And make sure to provide a suitable ending. So that's the suitable ending is our conclusion paragraph. And each one of these paragraphs does not have to be long, but it should be, you know, at least three to four sentences um, to make up the total letter. So generally, like I was saying, if you follow the formula, then you'll do well every time. Uh, you won't have any problems. So that's about it for today. Thank you, everyone, for attending the class. It was good to see you, and I hope to see you again. Have a great rest of your day, and take care. Bye-bye.